G'day and welcome. Um, this is a introduction video to take you through the very basics of uh, operating Octave. Um, to give you a bit of an understanding before you move on to more advanced concepts um, and other tutorials taking you into more in-depth elements of the program. But let us begin. To start off with a bit of an explanation of what you can see here, I'm going to take you through each of the different parts um, of what you can see here. The first part in the center is your command window. Your command window is your active space. Um, you can run Octave in a uh, command line mode. Uh, however, the, for me, the graphical interface is a little bit more friendly. Um, and gives you the option to actually directly work with a bunch of other bits, which we'll take through in a second. So as you can see, command window, type things out. This is where you can do simple stuff like multiplication, division, addition. So very simply, one plus one, and it comes back with the uh, correct answer, thankfully, which is two. Now some bits to note from this is each time you type something into the command window and execute, um, by default, it'll give you an answer. Um, now, what you can do, and what I recommend when you're doing larger bits, is you can actually suppress that output if you want. So in this case, one plus one, to suppress it, put a colon after the end of it. Now what that does, that still runs one plus one and gives you an answer, and the answer comes out in a variable called ANS, which is your last um, uh, uh, addition, multiplication, whatever, your last uh, thing that you've done, uh, which is an inputted directly into a variable. And we'll cover that a bit later. Now moving around, um, and why I've done that first in the command window is then you can see some of the other bits. Uh, so the next part is your file browser. One of the bits that you need to be careful of is when you start doing more advanced work and start working with functions, your functions that you have have to be in your current working directory. So in this case, you'll notice that the current directory is the same as the file browser. What this means is the files in here, and I've created one earlier for um, which calculates the, the drag on a tennis ball, um, will actually run. So if I type in here, uh, ten, tennis ball underscore drag, put a velocity inside of it, it'll then give me the drag in newtons calculated through that script. Now, if these two file, these two locations aren't the same and you see something here and you wanna run one of your functions, you'll get an error if, that's, if, they, if this is not set correctly. To set the correct location, just bring up this cog here and then just go set octave directive, directory and it's done. So that's now set correctly. Moving around, you have your workspace. <clears throat> the workspace will display any current variables, the type of, demer uh, type of um, variable, dimensions, which is relevant if it's a matrix, and then any values inside of that. As you can see, our last uh, was an answer, class double, uh, and it had a value of uh, 0.10556, which is the same as our answer up here. Now you'll note, when you started up, there was nothing across here in the variable editor. Your variable editor is where you can actually manually change um, uh, values inside a variable. Um, and to do that, just cl double click on one of your variables inside your workspace. It'll open up inside the variable editor. Once you're done, just close it out like so. Now the last bit is your command um, that I'll take you through now is your command history. So command history gives you a list of all the stuff that you've done. Um, this is good because it gives you a way to very easily go back and redo something you've done. So for example, we want to recalculate the tennis ball drag at 10 uh, meters per second. We just double click on this one. It'll rerun the calculation there. Um, if you want to get clear this, really easy to clear it. Come up the top to edit down to clear command history and you're good. You can also clear the workspace uh, and the um, command window by doing this, though I generally do it by this. So clear, will clear your workspace out. 
and CLC will come out and clear your uh, command window. Now, right, so we're doing all right so far. So like I said, let's go back. Let's actually, I'll show you how to set some values inside uh, variables. So for example, we want to make A equal a number. Really simple, A equals one. There you go. It's a single uh, value inside it, one by one dimen uh, dimension matrix, uh, and is now as such. We want to make B equal two. There we go. Comes up across here. We want to go a plus b it equals three now what we can also do there is very simply a plus b equals c and now c's it's outputted that value we now have c inside here now to actually make the matrices you do the following so if you want to make a two by two you can go first value, space, second value, semicolon, onto the next row, and there you go. So you now got a two by two matrix. You can do the same, so let's do the same for B. Let's turn B into a two by two matrix. So just remember, your colon takes you uh, down a row, and there we go. Uh, let's do something different with C. So C, I want to make all the integers from 1 to 10. So just do that the easiest way. Start value, increment by 1, finishing value, and there we go. C equals all the values from 1 to 10. Now say you want to do an operation on side of this and you want to um, work out what three times the third value inside C is. Really quite simple. Um, it is 3 times C3 and the answer is 9. So we, and we can also bring up and go C2, the answer is 2, whatever it is. Um, this gives you a good way. So if you're trying to transact with very specific values inside of something, you can do that. Um, if we want to make D, so if we want to do um, work out so D is equal to five times C. Once again, same thing. And there we go. It's just gone through and multiplied each of those values. Now think, if we're trying to create though, an X and Y type graph, um, let's go, so firstly, X equals zero, one, so from zero to 10 in increments of one. There we go. Now, if you come across here, you'll notice now we've got 11 values. Uh, the reason for this is it's counted zero and then another 10 values on top of it. If we want to get 10 points between zero and 10, we use a function called linspace. Um, to do that, and, and I guess how to call functions as well, type function name, inside um, round brackets is our input into that function. Uh, in this case, the linspace takes the starting value, which is zero, the end value, which is 10, and then how many values you want inside of that. Which then, when we run it, gives us zero, um, gives us points from zero to 10 at equally spaced intervals. Now, say we want to calculate y a y value off this, so some sort of equation. So say y, we've got an equation which is y is equal to x uh, squared plus five times x minus three, something along those lines. Now straight off the bat, this is not gonna work. And the reason this is not gonna work is this program is defaults to matrix operations. Now, in this instance, you can't multiply a one by 10 matrix by itself. So what you have to do is the by element or um, by element multiplication of it. To do that, you put a dot in there. And you can do the same with divide, but um, in this instance, we want to go a, a dot squared, a dot in front of the squared. What this will do will then go through for each value of x it will square it, 
add five times that value, then subtract three, and then put that into the corresponding value for y. So anyway, let's calculate that. And we've got a value. Moving on, um, if you want to, um, I guess, then plot that, and I've covered, I'll cover uh, a little bit more plotting in another tutorial, but really quite simply, all it is is plot x comma y. That will give you a nice plot over our range that we've put in there. Um, or if you want to see uh, just the points themselves, so say you're doing analysis on data, all you do then is scatter. So the difference between the two of them, and what I'll do, um, and you can, you can see it here. The difference between the two of them is plot, will plot each of these points and then draw a straight line between them, while scatter will then draw each of these points on. Uh, both of which obviously uh, have different uses and are both relatively useful for you. All right, so as I said, these are some of the um, very, very basic bits to get into it. Note, whenever you're doing operations, I highly recommend putting a semicolon. So if you look at our D there, um, it didn't have one. So the difference, still run the same ca uh, calculation. Chuck a semicolon, it suppresses the output. Um, now, as you're probably wondering why I do this, um, thinking, you know, sometimes it's good to see everything. The reason is, if you run a really large amount of calculations, so let's do one. So x equals zero to, with an increment of zero, 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 one to 100, and you end up with this. Now, this can be fine sometimes. Sometimes it can be a good safety blanket if you're running a script to actually have it output something. Uh, but for me, I don't, like it takes additional time. It delays whilst it actually de uh, displays each of these bits. Now to stop it running uh, in terms of through the screen, very simply, Control C. And that will still calculate all the values. So as you'll see here, you've got a one by, ooh, what's that? One by one million and one matrix. Um, and down here, we only displayed the first 392,000 odd values of it. So it still calculates it at the full things, but Control C stops displaying all of that scrolling, if that makes sense. Once again, let's clear the uh, clear this out and go back up to the top. This is a really quick, down and dirty video um, introducing, I guess, some of the core basics. Um, really simple arithmetic stuff within Octave. Um, I'll be doing a whole series on Octave from really simple right through to advanced. Um, if there's anything specific though that you want me to cover earlier because you've got a project that does it, whether it be advanced scripting, whether it be reading stuff in um, to Octave from different sources, um, leave a comment or hit me up uh, through an email and I'll get onto those bits and put them at the top of my priority list. But for now, thanks for watching, like and subscribe. and. Uh